Now we're on the inside of the 2012 C300 Formatic. That is our loaner for this week. As the door handle is getting replaced in a 2010 lease that we have. Uh, that's um, the reason we have this loan is because that 2010 C Class that um, we leased um, back in 09 has been giving us a lot of issues over the years. In the two years we've had it, we've had five flat tires. Um, we've had the transmission replaced in that car. The car didn't even have like 13,000 miles when the transmission was replaced. The ignition column starter mechanism, whatever Mercedes Benz call it, had to be replaced. Um, in that time, at the, at the same time actually as the transmission, and more recently the door handle literally just fell right off on that car. I went to open the door and the door handle came right off of my hand. Uh, I googled it and according to a lot of online sources, it seems to happen a lot in the C classes from 2008 to 2010, 2011. And Mercedes-Benz, we took it in for service for that door handle and they told us it does happen a lot and it results in a door panel, the entire door panel that needs to be replaced. I'm not sure if it's because our um, 2010 model has the memory seats um, in the door to control the seats. I'm not sure if that's a separate computer. The guy says, yeah, that all that has to be replaced because the cable that breaks off the handle is sort of embedded into the door panel. So the door panel has to be replaced and the cost for that it's about a thousand dollars and it takes about a week to order the panel and get it replaced or whatever so if you buy one of these cars out of warranty that's something to consider it seems to happen a lot I'm not sure if Mercedes is gonna um, sort of offer some sort of grace period or extension on the warranty specifically for that problem since it happens a lot but keep that in mind it's a thousand dollars out of your pocket if that door handle falls off um, that's it the first positives about this car I love this car way better than the 2010 model uh, or the previous year model in that you enter the car the steering wheel is a sporty steering wheel it's it's very nice to hold it's very grippy steering wheel it's like a leather wrapped um, steering thing it's firm it's nice it's not like soft or mushy I have an M steering wheel in my 3 series BMW and that's a soft padded wheel um, but it could get too soft, I'm not complaining, but this wheel is in between soft and hard. The wheel on the 2010 model is really hard and it's like, I don't know, sort of plasticky, but this wheel, it feels way better, way sporty. And this is a sport um, optioned uh, C-Class. The diameter of the wheel is also slimmer too. I'm not slimmer, I'm sorry, it's smaller, it's a smaller, sportier diameter. The wheel on the 2010 car that we have is big. It's a plastic feeling wheel that's big. But the diameter on this is noticeably smaller, it's easier to grip when you're driving. Um, this car has a navigation package, but the way Mercedes are doing their package in the 2012 car is a little slightly different. Um, you could get navigation, it, it, well, Someone that's not familiar with the packaging, you should ign just ignore what I'm saying. But before, BM um, Mercedes used to have Premium 1, pre Premium 2. Um, and in addition to that, you'd have options. And Premium 1, Premium 2 would basically cover everything you would want in the car. Now, Mercedes has sort of... Uh, just have premium one but premium two is now spliced and diced up into many options that you could add on to the car and all the options are costly the result of that ends up making the C-Class in 2012 being more expensive to build and package than in the previous years and this text this um, loaner car that we have it retails for forty two forty two thousand dollars and forty two thousand one hundred and twenty dollars is a retail on this car and all it has is navigation it doesn't have premium one or premium two package all it has is navigation which comes with like a command bluetooth technology package but in that the navigation package technology entertainment package it doesn't have the ipod or inbox um in our glove box ipod um connector so you can't connect an ipod to this car in any which way um it also doesn't have the um 12 volt 12 um power um out in, which is usually in the glove, lock, glove box it doesn't have that anymore and this is the technology package but it does have an SD card slot if you have music or pictures in an SD card slot you could put that SD card slot in there but I don't know many people that use SD cards in cars for music or and it's just a weird thing to have instead of I prefer an iPod adapter than that 
Um, and like I said, this car doesn't even come with leather seats. It's just a Mercedes-Benz um, rubber kind of, I think, their um, material, which is better, I think, in my opinion, than leather. It feels better. It's more environmentally friendly, and it, it's, it's not bad. It feels really good. And this is a $42,000 car, basically, at the end of the day. But, uh, like I said, it only comes with navigation, and it's, it has a reverse camera. But, in doing that, Mercedes-Benz took away the a reverse tilt mirror, which I find more helpful in terms of parallel parking in a city where, you know, you kind of hit the curb a lot more than the car behind you. For me, I, I don't know, many people may hit the car behind them, but this reverse camera business, I've never had a reverse camera in a car. But I've seen the BMW, the 5 Series, the new ones, uh, most of the BMWs now with park assist come with the reverse camera, but the reverse camera the BMW cars have like um, parking lines to let you know kind of where the car lines up in. Gives you a frame of reference with what is behind the car. Here is just a reverse camera showing you what's behind and as I'm reversing, I kind of don't have a sense of where I am in terms of this camera. And this camera, looking at this camera takes away from just looking behind and seeing what's there are looking in that mirror right there and seeing the curb that I'm gonna hit, you know? So looking at this camera, looking at a reverse screen, camera screen, I'm like, whoa, wh where am I in terms of what I'm seeing on that screen? I don't have a sense of the position of the car to the screen. That being said, everything else on the C-Class in 2012 is basically unchanged um, in terms of the um, previous years. The compass mirror is no more, the home link is still there. But I think because the navigate because this car has navigation, Mercedes Benz opt to not put a compass um in the car in the compass mirror in the car. Not a big deal. Um, that said, the sporty the car is more sporty than previous years, and I'm gonna just go on a little drive. And another thing, the odometer is a little, a little different. The text font on this odometer is really nice. It's updated, it's like Windows XP, Windows Vista versus um, Windows 95, which was the font kind of, it was like a weird MS-DOS font on the um, 2010 odometer. The text font was weird text display. So here we have a direction of travel. It gives you a little direction as well. There's a lot more features in the um, odometer. And I've always been a critic of the Mercedes-Benz odometer. I've, I've actually gotten a speeding ticket once because it's going 60, 68 and a 55. Be simply because, and I also didn't realize I was going how I didn't realize how fast I was going because at the time I was speeding, I was reading. I think I was reading the radio. What song was playing on the radio at the time? It gives you the radio display in there, and I think I even told officer like, "Listen, look at my odometer, dude. I can't even tell how fast I'm going. It's so much information in that odometer." And you know, the the car was um, the 2010 car we have. It was a fairly fast car, so you could accelerate zero to sixty and not really know it. Um, so I just turn on the radio. And also the font on the radio is a lot better in this year. It's similar to the S-Class, um, Mercedes-Benz S-Class, their navigation font. It catches up with that, the way that looks. I really like it. It's really smooth, clear type font as well. And as you can see, the different options in a entertainment system is right here. And Mercedes, I like the mute button. It's really interesting. There's a mute button here. There's a mute button there. You know, whatever. And this car does have, I think it has the Bluetooth option but it's not hooked up radio and then navigation and the navigation is really nice you can zoom in you can zoom out with the scroll wheel here I really like that and it shows you where we are which is um Greystone New York my hometown where I live and let's go for a ride and as I'm driving you're gonna feel how fast this car accelerates this is a 4 car, it's only 228 horsepower, just to give you a, a kind of sense of what I'm driving. And it's just like a country road, there's not much traffic on it, so... And lucky for me there's no cops, so I could do a little bit of acceleration if I want to. truck in the way. Don't know why. Just past the car. Do a little bit of accelerate. So you see
see I just went from 0 to 60 and it felt really smooth in the transmission and the engine growls in this car and the 2010 car that we have you can't really hear the engine turn the music down so you can hear and I'm gonna just you turn over here this is where the cops hang out and wait for people speeding I'm mean, just gonna reverse and go back. This is all country roads. Back up in Westchester, New York. And you hear that growl, you hear that acceleration. I mean, I love that. The 2010 car that we have, the same car, same engine. It doesn't, doesn't do that. I don't know what Mercedes-Benz did different in the 2012 car, but it, it is sporty. It feels like a sports car, a sports sedan. No complaints there. The acceleration is really smooth. The braking is actually also good as well. I think these come with Continental Conti um, regular tires, uh, not the run flat, they're just regular tires. Um, based on our experience, we're getting five flat tires in the 2010 car. Um, these tires feel a lot more grippy in the road. It doesn't feel like I'm gonna get a flat tire if I hit a pothole. And this is kind of going uphill right now. And you see the car is just accelerating. It's just... It's just going. And I'm always thinking of safety, so braking is just as important. And the braking time is really smooth and really um, accurate. I mean, on point. It doesn't feel like the car is slipping or out of control. And I'm going to wind down my review over here. And that's it. Um, actually, I'm just going to go down to the river real quick. And that acceleration is just really nice. And this is uh it's home on the river. And like I said, like this car, I'm really impressed with the 2010 car. It's definitely worth it. I mean, the 2012 car. It's definitely worth it over our 2010 um, lease that we have now, which um, we are going to get rid of as soon as the lease is out. We're going to get rid of that car, and I'm not sure what we're going to do. But this is a, this 2012 Mercedes C-Class C300. There's also a C250 now in this um, year model. Um, the cars, they're sportier, they're much better quality interior parts. It looks better outside in my opinion. People might go back and forth and it looks outside. But it's definitely worth it if you could afford it. Um, definitely get it. And I'm going to give this car much higher marks than I gave the 2010 car when I did that review a couple years ago. And that's it.